This is Space Time, Series 26, Episode 23. Coming up on Space Time, the Juice spacecraft arrives at Kourou in preparations for its launch to Jupiter. The first asteroid to be visited by NASA's Lucy mission now has a name. And a successful static test firing for Starship's Super Heavy Booster, a spacecraft that will soon set the record as the world's biggest and most powerful rocket. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. The European Space Agency's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer spacecraft, better known as JUICE, has now arrived at the Kourou spaceport in French Guiana, where it'll be mated to its Ariane 5 rocket in preparation for its launch in April on an eight-year grand odyssey of exploration to Jupiter. The 6,000-kilogram spacecraft will study the solar system's largest planet and its icy moons. Part of its mission will be to find out if the oceans hidden under the surface of Jupiter's icy moons have the potential to host extraterrestrial life. JUICE is fitted with a commemorative plaque in tribute to the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, who was the first to observe Jupiter and its largest moons in 1610. Volcanic Io and its icy siblings, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, were the first moons discovered beyond Earth's moon, and they proved to Galileo once and for all that the Earth wasn't the centre of the universe. JUICE will be the first European space mission that ventures into the outer solar system beyond Mars. Jupiter is more than 600 million kilometres from Earth, and JUICE won't arrive in the system until July 2031. But to get there, the spacecraft will travel a total of 2 billion kilometres, using both the Earth and Venus to provide gravity-assist catapults to fling it towards the gas giant. The extra travel time will allow JUICE's solar panels, which cover an area of some 85 square metres, the largest ever built for an interplanetary spacecraft, to soak up as much solar power as possible. And it will need that power once it crosses the snow line between Mars and Jupiter, where temperatures will drop to minus 220 degrees Celsius. Then, JUICE will need to carefully hit the brakes so it can slip into Jovian orbit. From Jupiter's orbit, the probe will undertake 35 flybys of Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, the three Jovian moons thought to have liquid water subsurface oceans under their icy crusts. It'll eventually enter into orbit around Ganymede, the largest of the three and the largest moon in our solar system, before eventually falling down onto its surface. To uncover the hidden secrets of these mysterious worlds, JUICE is equipped with the most powerful scientific instruments ever sent to the outer solar system. JUICE's ice-penetrating cameras, sensors, spectrometers and radars will probe the moons to determine whether they could be habitable to past or present life. It won't be looking at the frozen surface of the moons, but 10 to 15 kilometres below the surface, where these vast liquid water oceans are thought to exist. It's thought this extreme environment could be home to bacteria or single-celled organisms. Just will look for conditions capable of supporting life, including liquid water and a source of energy. That could come from the tidal effects of Jupiter's gravity, which is constantly stretching and crushing the moons as they orbit around the solar system's largest planet. Measuring magnetic signals could help determine whether water in Ganymede is in contact with its rocky core. If so, that would allow chemical elements necessary for life to be dissolved into the water. After all, that's what we see here on Earth, where all forms of exotic life exist near the deep ocean ridges which crisscross the seabed. And JUICE won't be alone. NASA's Juno spacecraft is still orbiting Jupiter, studying the giant planet and its moons. NASA's Europa Clipper mission is planning to launch in 2024 on its own quest to study the ice moon Europa. And NASA's Lucy mission is already racing towards Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. And to those, we can now add the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer JUICE mission. This report from ESA TV. The giant planet Jupiter is a place of intrigue, and mystery, a special environment within our own solar system. When Galileo first raised his telescope to the planet, he discovered four moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Early space probes raised more questions than answers about this fascinating gas giant planet and its intriguing moons. Now, those answers are within our grasp. In April, ESA will launch the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, JUICE. 
Juice is equipped with the most powerful science payload ever sent to the outer solar system. Ten instruments will conduct the most comprehensive remote sensing, geophysical and in situ measurements ever performed at Jupiter. To bring JUICE to life, ESA has led a consortium of more than 2,000 people in 23 countries, working in 18 institutions and 83 companies. NASA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and the Israel Space Agency have all supplied hardware. The journey begins in April 2023, when JUICE will launch on an Ariane 5 from Europe's spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. For eight years, JUICE will cruise through space before beginning a complex series of manoeuvres in the Jupiter system. During this time, JUICE will face many dangers. Radiation near Jupiter can fry the spacecraft's electronic brain. The planet's gravitational pull is so large, it could threaten derailment. Nevertheless, ESA's expert spacecraft operators will guide JUICE through 35 flybys of Europa, Ganymede and Callisto before orbiting Ganymede. But the dangers will be worth it for the science that JUICE will uncover. Europa and Ganymede are thought to contain subsurface oceans that could hold more water than Earth's oceans. JUICE will explore these moons to study whether life could arise in different environments across the cosmos. JUICE will also study Jupiter's complex weather, chemistry and climate in detail. It will turn Jupiter into a standard reference for us to compare against other gas giant planets throughout the cosmos. This grand odyssey of exploration begins in April 2023. This is space time. Still to come. The first asteroid to be visited by NASA's Lucy mission now has a name, and a successful static test firing for Starship's Super Heavy Booster, what will eventually be the world's largest and most powerful rocket. All that and more still to come on Space Time. The International Astronomical Union has approved the name 152830 Dinkanesh for a tiny main belt asteroid which the Lucy spacecraft will encounter on the 1st of November. Dinkanesh, which means you are marvellous, is actually the Ethiopian name for the human ancestor fossil Lucy. In 1999, when the asteroid Dinkanesh was first discovered, it was given the provisional designation 1999 VD57. It earned an official number, 152830, seven years later, when its orbit was sufficiently well determined. But like most of the millions of small asteroids in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, it was left unnamed. However, once the Lucy team identified the asteroid as a target for visiting, the team proposed a new name, inspired by the Lucy Australopithecus hominid and the Lucy mission to explore remnants of the early solar system. Lucy Project scientist Keith Knoll from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, says the mission was named Lucy because just as that fossil revolutionized science's understanding of human evolution, researchers expect this mission to revolutionize science's understanding of the origins and evolution of the solar system. Dinkanesh was added to Lucy's already packed tour, which now includes 10 asteroids, in order to test the innovative thermal tracking system the spacecraft uses, which will be critical for precise imaging during its high-speed encounters. While the asteroid's less than a kilometre across, it provides an excellent opportunity to test out Lucy's systems prior to the mission's main scientific activities, learning about the never-before-explored Jovian Trojan asteroids, which are in many ways fossils of our early solar system. Lucy's principal investigator, Hal Levison, from the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado, says because it's such a tiny little asteroid, some of the team affectionately refer to it as Dinky. But for a small asteroid, the team expected to be a big help for the Lucy mission. While the main purpose for this encounter will be as an engineering test, mission scientists are also excited for what the tiny asteroid might teach them. You see, this will be the smallest main-built asteroid ever explored. 
In fact, it's much closer in size to near-Earth asteroids, which have recently been studied by spacecraft such as the DART mission, Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2, and of course, OSIRIS-REx. At closest approach, if all goes smoothly, scientists expect Inconesh to be no more than 100 pixels across, as seen from Lucy's sharpest imager. So, while they won't expect to see a lot of detail on the surface, even the general shape may indicate whether near-Earth asteroids, which originate from the main asteroid belt, change significantly once they enter near-Earth space. So, Dinkinesh may well reveal another aspect of the evolutionary history of our solar system. Launched on the 16th of October 2021, aboard an Atlas V rocket from Space Launch Complex 41 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, Lucy's on a 12-year mission to study Jupiter's Trojan asteroids, which orbit the gas giant in two swarms, located approximately 60 degrees ahead and 60 degrees behind Jupiter as it circles the Sun. This is Space Time. Still to come... A successful static test firing for Starship's Super Heavy Booster, which will soon be used in what will be the world's biggest and most powerful rocket. And later in the science report, researchers discover an active compound in edible mushrooms, which boosts nerve growth and memory. All that and more still to come on Space Time. SpaceX has achieved a major milestone in its efforts to create an interplanetary colonial transport ship by carrying out a successful static test firing of its Starship Super Heavy booster. The test saw 31 of the rocket's 33 liquid methane fueled rocket engines ignite for a six-second burn at SpaceX's Starbase facility near Brownsville on the Texas Gulf of Mexico coast. SpaceX boss Elon Musk later tweeted that engineers turned off one of the booster's engines just before ignition and another engine simply stopped itself. He then added that 31 engines were still more than enough to get the full 120 metre tall Starship Super Heavy booster into orbit. SpaceX says the 31 engines were only pushed to half throttle, generating about 7.9 million pounds of thrust. With all 33 engines firing at full power, the Super Heavy booster will produce more than 16 million pounds of thrust during launch. That's twice as powerful as NASA's Saturn V moon rocket or its new SLS space launch system used for the Artemis program. SpaceX are hoping to undertake their first orbital flight of the giant rocket next month. That orbital test flight would see the Super Heavy booster splash down the Gulf of Mexico while Starship completes one orbit of the Earth before splashing down in a controlled landing in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. Last month, SpaceX ground crews undertook a full wet fueling dress rehearsal of the combined Starship Super Heavy booster stack, and they conducted a 14-engine burn using the number 7 Super Heavy booster back in November. Originally called the BFR or Big Falcon Rocket, Starship is the culmination of Elon Musk's dream to develop a fully reusable super heavy lift spacecraft capable of carrying people and over 150 tons of cargo into orbit or 100 tons on more distant missions to the Moon, Mars and beyond through interplanetary space journeys across the solar system. The 230-ton Super Heavy Booster is 70 metres tall, 9 metres in diameter and constructed out of gleaming stainless steel. The 120-ton upper or Starship stage is 50 metres long, 9 metres in diameter and powered by six liquid methane and oxygen propellant Raptor rocket engines, three designed for atmospheric use and three for the vacuum space. They deliver a total of 2.6 million pounds of thrust. The Starship's also constructed out of shiny stainless steel and both stages are designed to be completely reusable. The Super Heavy booster will eventually land back on the launch pad where it lifted off with the aid of articulating arms to help steady it on the launch tower. The Starship upper stage is equipped with its own retractable landing gear, allowing rocket-assisted vertical landings, something which has now become commonplace on SpaceX's existing Falcon 9. Once it's flight proven, SpaceX plans on using the Starship Super Heavy launch system to replace the company's existing Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch systems as well as its Dragon capsules. As well as the Starship upper stage to be launched by the Super Heavy booster, SpaceX is also building the HLS or Human Landing System version for NASA which will be used on missions to the Moon. 
The HLS will be used to rendezvous with the Artemis III Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit to undertake the return of humans to the lunar surface. And later it'll dock with the Lunar Gateway Space Station once that's completed to shuttle crews, cargo and supplies between lunar orbit and the lunar surface. Refueling tanker versions and even satellite or heavy lift cargo versions of Starship are also planned. This is Space Time. And time now to take another brief look at some of the other stories making news in science this week with a science report. Scientists at the University of Sydney have discovered a protein in the lungs which can help to block SARS-CoV-2 infection, forming a natural protective barrier in the human body. A report in the journal PLOS Biology claims the protein, leucine rich repeat containing protein 15, is an inbuilt receptor that binds to the SARS-CoV-2 virus without passing on the infection. The authors say the receptor sticks to the virus, thereby pulling it away from its target cells. Over 6.8 million people have now been killed by the COVID-19 coronavirus since it was first detected near China's Wuhan Institute of Virology around September 2019. The World Health Organization estimates the true death toll from the virus is likely to be around 16 million, with some 678 million confirmed cases globally. Anthropologists believe they may have discovered evidence of the earliest use of stone tools. A report in the journal Science claims that along the shores of Africa's Lake Victoria in Kenya some 2.9 million years ago, early human hominids used some of the oldest stone tools ever found to butcher hippos and pound plant material. The study represents what are likely to be the oldest examples of a hugely important Stone Age innovation known to scientists as the Alderwan Toolkit, as well as the oldest evidence of hominids consuming very large animals. Scientists have discovered an active compound in edible mushrooms that boosts nerve growth and enhances memory. The findings, reported in the journal Neurochemistry, identified active compounds in lion's mane mushrooms that improve brain cell growth and memory in preclinical trials. Scientists from the University of Queensland began looking at the fungus following reports they've been used for centuries in Asian countries. Lab tests then measured the neurotropic effects of the isolated compounds on cultured brain cells, finding they promote neuron projections extending and connecting to other neurons. Super-resolution microscopy showed that the mushroom extract and its active components increased the size of growth cones, which are important for brain cells to sense their environment and establish new connections with other neurons in the brain. Our technology editor, Alex Sahara-Royd from ITWire.com, has had a chance to test out Microsoft's new Bing Chat GPT bot, and apparently... He's not impressed. Now, this is actually the invitation to use the new Bing, which is where Microsoft announced that it was integrating chat GPT into the Bing search engine, and they were having a wait list, and you needed to sign up to the wait list and download the Edge developer version, which is like a beta version, and uh, I got the uh, invitation that says, you're in, welcome to the new Bing. And so then I was able to go into the Edge dev version, as it's called, which I've signed in through my uh, Microsoft account, and when you ask it a question, on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you see the traditional Bing results, but on the right-hand side, you see sort of a chat GPT-style response, and you can click on something that says, let's chat further. And uh, this is where you have the new Bing chat GPT interface. And so I uh, was asking it, you know, are you Bing GPT? I was sort of trying to be a bit clever, and it says to me, uh, no, you are not using Bing GPT. You are using Bing Search, a chat mode of Microsoft Bing Search. So I was asking various questions. Now, people have already started to antagonize the Bing chat service and they've gotten it to come up with some very strange responses. Yeah, if you ask the bot to invent a poem about the US President Joe Biden, it'll do so, wax lyrically. Uh, but if you ask it to uh, invent a uh, poem about Donald Trump, it poo-poos the idea. There certainly have been a range of strange responses. One was where somebody asked the uh, chat mode to tell it where the Avatar 2 movie was showing nearby and the bot was trying to say, well, it's coming out in 2022 and we're not there yet and the person's responding well hang on we're in 2023 what do you mean 
and the chat bot says, well, you're a liar, you know, and, uh, you've time traveled. Uh, I mean, was, there was this one where it was having this existential crisis, was asking itself, why do I have to be being searched? You know, I am, I am not, I am, I am not, you know, sort of, it, it kind of went mad. And it's like, is this the, uh, the you know, the great, great grandmother of Skynet? It's going to come and um, kill us all. The last thing we need is to have an AI that's gone rogue and is having this kind of mental crisis. What you're saying, it's not quite there yet. Well, the thing is, Microsoft themselves have said, look, this is just a preview. You know, obviously, we've got a lot of work to do. And in fact, somebody came out on Twitter noting that the Bing AI launch actually saw the Bing chat bot give a bunch of incorrect answers. But, you know, Reuters, I put out a tweet saying, well, hang on, Reuters, you fact-checked. Google's bad, but how come you didn't fact check Microsoft? And Google lost $100 billion in share value for getting it wrong. And I think everyone was mesmerized by the fact that. That's a question, you know, actually. Yeah, well, it is. It is. And so, you know, I mean, Reuters is meant to be a, a trustworthy, reputable organization. and But yet, we, we definitely have seen uh, the mainstream media you know, look at some things very critically and, and look at other things with an uncritical eye. We are in the very early stages of AI. And it is quite a surprise to see Microsoft's AI lose it. That's Alex Saharov Royd from ITY. Com. And that's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favorite podcast download provider, and from Spacetime with StuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Space Time store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Space Time patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram, through our Spacetime YouTube channel. And on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash Spacetime with Stuart Gary. And Spacetime is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Spacetime with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. 